Still can't hear us? Can you hear us? No sound. Jake, you'll tell us when you can hear us. He's coming out. Yeah, we have no sound. No sound. No. Yeah, it says no sound, but it's on the USB camera audio. Oh, now Lisa Worthing is saying they can hear us. Okay, they can hear now? Yeah, you can hear now? Okay. Yes, we can hear. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Thanks for letting us know. This is why we went live early. Yeah, this is why we did a practice. Do a little practice time. Yeah, thank okay. you. I got to turn off the baseball game. Okay, so hi, Jennifer. Hi, everybody. Hi, Lisa. Hi, JJ. Thank you. Thanks, Southern Dad. Bell. Okay. Oh, hi, Darlene. Yay, so glad you all joined us. We're yeah, very excited. We are very, so excited. very excited. And I'm glad that we got the sound thing figured out before official start time. So yeah. this is great. Uh, Misty, my friend Misty. Hi, K Carolyn. Good to see you, Lorraine. All right, we're gonna give it one more minute. One more. Yep. Okay. Yay. Okay. Hi, Sheila. Sheila's from West Virginia. Yes, yeah, my neighbor. Says. Yeah. Hey. Okay. So before we start, I just want to say, if you guys have questions at any time, feel free to leave a comment with your questions, and we will have a Q and A if there's time at the end. Um, we're going to try to honor the time. Our plan is to go from seven to nine. It's a long time, um, and we may not need all of that time. Right. But if you yeah. have questions, definitely put a comment with your question and. Um, when we get to that point in the time, uh, we'll scroll through and try to answer any of the questions that you have. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Are we ready? I think we're ready. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Okay. I'm Jen. I'm Marcia. And we are T for All Reasons. And we are very excited to uh, share with you tonight some basics about tea uh, to show you what the teas look like. And um, yeah, that's... yeah, we're gonna we're gonna um, talk about each variety of tea, the um, qualities of the varieties, the uniqueness of each one. Uh, Jen's gonna be brewing up the tea so you can actually see what they look like brewed. And um, the one thing that you're gonna miss is the tasting and the smelling, and the which smell, is the awesome. Smell. The awesomeness of the tasting and the smelling. But uh, we're going to do our best to be able to convey that to you as best we can through the magic of live Facebook. That's right. That's right. Yep. Okay. So let's go. Let's go. All right. Um, so I thought it would be kind of fun if we talk a little bit about how we got into this whole thing. Sure. Because that seems to be the main question that I get asked uh, when someone finds out that I um, was in the tea business, how in the world did you get in the tea business? And actually, it goes back a long time. It goes back to the first seed that was planted when um, hubby and I were, and our family, our girls, were living in England. And we had a wonderful experience of living in the culture there um, and learning about the different um pleasures of living in England and most especially tea. And so it kind of planted a seed in my head. And then you fast forward, golly, like 20 years. And Jen actually came to me one day, she was through college and she was living with some girls. And she asked if I would be willing to maybe just give a little demonstration of cooking to her roommates. And so I did that. And from that, we kind of expanded into cooking classes for other women and the youth of our church. And then a, a woman approached me one day and said, you know, Marsha, I think you could do the same thing with tea. And tea was just beginning to come into popularity 
um, and really having a, a resurgence. And this was in 1997. And so I started having workshops, what I called tea workshops on the pleasures of tea in, in our kitchen. It was a different house than we're in now, but it was basically the same type of uh, environment that I was able to do workshops for women. And we had over 300 people come through over a three year period enjoying these workshops. And during the course of the time, people started asking me about where to buy good quality tea. Well, at that point, I was uh, our daughter, our younger daughter lived in New York City. And so I was getting a lot of my tea in New York City. And I knew I couldn't tell them, you know, well, go to New York. And so I thought, you know, I need to pursue this. I need to look into this, which I did. I found a vendor um, and started that really started the loose leaf tea business. I stopped doing the workshops and just focused on the sale of loose leaf tea. And it expanded to um, two websites and uh, online sales through um, uh, personal contact and open houses and what have you. And I did that for 19 years uh, out of our home. And last year I decided to retire and uh, had no idea that Jen had been pondering the idea of maybe taking over the business. And when we talked about it, I realized that this, this was really the answer to the transition. And so she took over the business in January. And so now we're, uh, here we are. Here we are. <laughs> here we are. It's crazy. Crazy good. So you can tell from your yeah. perspective. From my perspective, uh, I never thought I would take over mom's business. I had no intention of taking it over, but as the years went on and she started floating the idea of retirement out there, there was a part of me that didn't want to see the business leave the family. It really, even though it was mom's business, it really was kind of a family business um, as well. And um, so when she mentioned she wanted to retire at the end of last year, I just knew that if I could, that I wanted to take it over. So I prayed about it for a long time. I talked with my husband about it for a long time and he's awesome and very supportive. And he said, yeah, do it. And so here we are. I took over the business in January and it's been amazing, wonderful. I love it. And i um, very excited to add this new piece to yeah. what we're doing in selling tea. And I'm glad that mom is um, helping <laughs> because <laughs> she is definitely way more expert about tea than I am. And uh, so I'm grateful that she is willing to do these live demos with me. Um, it teaches me as well as you. So with that, let's, yeah. well, oh, first off, I wanted to say, okay, so I am going to do a giveaway. So get all excited. I'm going to give away some yeah. tea. So I'm going to give away a package of the fall favorites samples. And so it's six teas, half ounce bags of teas. Last week on another live, I said it was five ounces in the bags. It's not five ounces, half ounce bags, six of them in the fall favorite sampler. Um, and I'll explain the teas in a second. But the way the giveaway is going to work is leave a comment, fall favorites, and um, it's not first come first serve. Whoever comments fall favorites, I'm gonna see all of those comments between the group and the Facebook page. I'm gonna put all of the names in the hat, probably tomorrow, and I will have my daughter or somebody in my family pull a name out of the hat and whoever's name is drawn will be the winner of the fall favorite sampler. So comment fall favorites if you're interested in some free tea. And um, we'll enter you in and we'll drawing. enter you in the drawing. And so what the teas are in the fall sampler, just to let you know, autumn harvest, which is a black tea, falling leaves, which is a black tea, maple leaf, which is a rooibos tea, Pumpkin Spice Cheesecake, rooibos Tea, 
Jen's apple cobbler, green tea, and pecan pumpkin tart, green tea. So you get two black teas, two green teas, two rooibos teas in the fall favorite sampler. And this very sampler is going to head the somebody email this coming week. Yeah. Awesome yumminess. It's very good. Really good. Okay. Um, just a special shout out to our friend Angela, who's been really supportive of us. She's up in New York City, and we just thank you, Angela, for joining us tonight. Um, and there's so many more. My uh, my page is not showing up all the comments. I'm getting them, um, but we've got quite a few online with us. So we appreciate your being there. Uh, your great, great support and great friends to us. And we really feel like your friends. We mm -hmm. really do. Absolutely. So if your name's not mentioned, please, it's just simply because I'm not seeing everybody's name up here. And we're looking at the camera. And we're trying to look at the camera. We're looking we're, at you. We're looking at you. Okay. <laughs> um, Okay. So do we want to go into the tea or talk about uh, this, about the brewing accessories? Yes. Yeah, go ahead and do that. Okay. So I did want to show, we'll get to the teas in just a second, but I did want to show some of the things that I offer in the shop. It's one thing to look at them uh, in a static picture online, and it's quite another to see them in hands to get more scale and to see what they look like. So I am going to show you a few of the things that I do feature in the shop and what it is that they look like. So first off is my mother's cookbook here. And um, she has signed the inside. And the cookbook does feature her cream scone recipe. No fail, the easiest scone recipe you will ever find. And I'm, I'm not exaggerating. It, it, no fail. You cannot mess up this recipe. It's perfection. They're the most delicious scones. So there's can that. I, can I say one thing about that? Yeah. The cool thing about the cookbook is that the men I mentioned earlier about the workshops that I did. And in the cookbook are 13 different themed teas. If you're looking for ideas of how to uh, create a tea for your friends or for whatever occasion, it has 13 different themed teas. And these are the themed teas that um, I created for these workshops. We had tables set up all over the house with each one of these teas. Back in the day when this was published, I couldn't do photographs um, because it was cost prohibitive. So sadly, I don't have the photographs in the cookbook, but you'll get a good idea from the descriptions and the menu and the recipes, what the theme teas were all about. Perfect, yeah, excellent. And then um, I have a, I have another side business that uh, many of my friends already know about. I make jewelry and I also embellish um, tea infusers. So this is a cup size infuser, um, holds one cup that, that would do one cup. And I embellish them with a little extra um, tra uh, chain that will dangle out of the cup, keeps the... Uh, infuser from, you know, it keeps the chain from falling into the, um, into the cup with pretty little charms. Like this one's a cameo and I have one with a sweet little butterfly. Hopefully you can see that kind of blends with my shirt. Um, this one has a really pretty leaf kind of patina on it. And this one's got a sweet, dangly little sparkly charm anyway so there these are in the online store i am going to make more and add them to the store as well i have uh strainers um and this is what it looks like in the box we're actually going to be using one tonight a little cup strainer fits over your cup pour your pot of tea you can use from going into your pot uh, I also have these cute little um, tea clips. So when you have a tea bag that doesn't have a string on it, or even if you do have a commercial tea bag that has a string, it may not be long enough. It'll fall into your cup. Just put this little clip on it. It works with the tea sacks that I also sell. And I, I'm going to show you those. So you put your tea, your loose leaf tea in these sacks. You can fold it up, and then that will dangle out of your cup. And, uh, and it's cute too. So then the tea sacks, I now carry three sizes. I carry the size one, which is for one cup. And a cup is a teacup. We're, yeah. we're talking about a five, five ounce cup is a teacup. 
Um, so if you're doing a mug, you're going to need, uh, well, I'll get to how much, but uh, this will work, but I recommend going up a size to the two because it gives a little bit more room for the tea. So the two will work for a mug, um, a regular mug, large mug. If you use a 20 ounce Yeti like I do, you're, you, you need the bigger bag. And then the three uh, is for a pot of tea. They make a size four. I don't carry the four right now. Um, that would be for a really large pot, like yeah. a six to eight cup yeah, pot. Or, actually, I've used these for a um, six to eight cup, but the four is great. Like you're doing a pitcher of iced tea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, and so the three. And so I carry these three sizes and maybe next summer I'll add the four. Yeah. For and, iced tea. and I do recommend the chain and the clip, especially if you're doing um, a, a pot of or a a pitcher of iced tea because that will definitely fall into yeah. the pitcher. So. And uh, and then to go with the tea sack, I carry these uh, tea bag squeezer. It would work for a regular tea bag too. And they're it's a great tool. I keep it is. I keep one in my kitchen. Yeah. And then I also carry these spoons. Now you can use any old spoon, but these are great. This is the perfect cup of teaspoon. This is going to give you uh, the exact amount that you need for a five ounce cup. So like for me with a mug, a typical mug is about 10 to 11 ounces. I'm going to use two of these. And then this one is the perfect pot of teaspoon. And this is for three to four cups, uh, a three or four cup pot. And so depending on your pot, you might need one or two of these um, spoons of these it, for that. And I have one over there. And then... Um, and then I carry three different size bags of tea in my shop, um, two, four, and eight ounce bags. I don't have an eight ounce bag with me because um, I don't have any packaged. That's not, uh, that size and ounce just as much. Um, but this is the two ounce bag. And um, they are heat sealed at the top with a Ziploc closure. And then this is the four ounce bag. Um, and I always put brewing instructions on the back of your bags of tea. So depending on the type of tea, depends on how you're going to brew it. And so I always make sure that the packages have um, those instructions on them. And I think that covers this. And so I think we're ready to actually start our demo. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. What All right. Doing? Well, I, I for some reason I can't get um, I can't see the comments. We have ninety two comments. Oh, okay. And so I thought maybe I'd be better on the phone. So um, that's why. Well, okay. Okay. So, we'll get there. Well, right. they're all here. I can see. Them all you here. can see them. Yeah. Okay. So you can here. say hello, hello to folks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and then Whenever you want to, just okay. go ahead. Well, so. I'm not going to jump in because, okay. okay, now we're getting to the tea demo yeah. portion of our evening. Well, what, are, what I thought we would do is just tell you a little bit about, um, just a little bit about the history because we know it's late at night. Some of you, you know, it's going to be your bedtime. We don't want to bore you, but just to give you a little idea about the history of tea um, that goes back um, really thousands of years to a Chinese emperor who just accidentally uh, came upon this wonderful elixir of tea because he had uh, been sitting in a tree boiling water and a camellia sinensis blossom fell into his pot and boiled and the aroma hit him and he tried it and it was wonderful and so he decided that it had wonderful healthy properties and wonderful taste and that was really how it started it was imported exported from china it made its way through the cross country and uh, made its way also to england by the clipper ships you probably heard about the clipper ships you may have heard about the cuddy sark that is in london well the clipper ships were key to the exportation of tea from China to England. And they would have races to see who could get to London first to get to the trade, um, the traders there. And uh, so eventually the clipper ships uh, were taken over uh, by other forms of 
transportation when the Suez Canal was built and what have you. But uh, tea by that time had really made its mark all through Europe and in England and eventually to uh, America. But um, so tea, that's kind of the, the history, the little bit of background about it. Did you know that 3 million tons of tea are grown every year and that 2 billion people drink tea worldwide every day? Um, Britain actually is the second um, largest tea drinking country in the world. And I don't want to take the time to ask you to answer this question, but Ireland is actually tops for the tea drinkers in the world. Um, and UK, the UK drinks 165 million cups of tea per day. That's pretty amazing. It's a lot of tea. It's a lot of tea. Yeah. Um, one other little tip is that in China, they named it um, Tay, T-A-I, which actually means peace, which is a great name for it because it really does give such a comforting peace when you drink it. It just has that, those wonderful properties, um, the hot tea and everything is just very comforting. So to have that name is really appropriate. All right, um, tea is grown now all over the world. It's grown in the Far East. It's grown in India. It's grown in, in Africa. We're going to talk a little bit about the tea that's grown in Africa, although we're going to talk about rooibos, but that's South Africa. But there are other uh, African nations like Kenya that grow tea. Um, also Hawaii and Charleston in the United States grows tea. And one of our favorite places that, we, that Hubby and I have visited ourselves is the Tregothnan plantation in Devon, England, and they're tea growers. And they now are so uh, widely accepted as a reputable tea that China is actually ordering tea from Tregothnan. So it's a wonderful place. And they actually have tours. Um, if you, uh, if um, yeah. You can sign up for a tour at Tregothnan. All right. Well, let's uh, let's start out by talking about the different varieties of tea. And there, we're showing you the six varieties of tea, um, and uh, that there are in um, available these days. And the um, first one is black. Well, let me go through them first. Black. There's oolong, green tea, white tea, rooibos, and herbals. And rooibos and herbals are really kind of in the same category of a variety of tea as they do not contain the Camellia sinensis leaf as these other four do. So they're in another category uh, all on their own. But these four, black, oolong, green, and white are all from the Camellia sinensis plant. And it's a, it's a bush. It's like a, a, a big, beautiful green bush. It looks like a Camellia bush. Um, so let's start with the black. And the, oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna show. Yeah. No, you talk about it. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna talk about really the champagne of teas, which is Darjeeling. And Darjeeling is grown in India. And it is um, also grown in other regions, but the most famous um, plantations are in India. And this particular one that Jen carries is from the Mim estate. And Darjeeling teas, you'll find some out there from other companies that are labeled Darjeeling, but very often they're a, a blend because that helps them to get their price down. It's best to buy your Darjeeling from an estate because you know it's the top quality of Darjeeling. Now, that also means you're going to pay a little more for that, but you're really getting a top quality tea. And this Mim Darjeeling, I've carried this one from the beginning and have never strayed 
to be tempted to buy anything else because it is the best of best. And so Jen's going to brew that up and you're going to get to see what it looks like in the cup. The interesting thing is that as we show you the different teas as they're brewed, you're going to definitely tell the difference in color. So black tea looks like black in, in the, in the cup. Um, and there are some uh, unflavored black, and then we have flavored black. And Jen has both in her, um, in her shop um, some of the unflavored blacks, and we're kind of focusing on the unflavored blacks tonight. Um, the first one is um, the... Uh, most well-known and probably most popular of black teas, which is English breakfast. Um, certainly hubby's favorite. He is a purist and he just loves a good, strong black tea. Um, and so the, um, if you want to show them that the difference between these two, and I'm showing, she's showing you the English breakfast, and then Irish breakfast. And the English breakfast is a little bit of a um, larger leaf. It's not a large leaf, but it is a little bit bigger. And the Irish breakfast is definitely finer, but they're both good, strong teas, good quality black teas. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah. And then another black tea that, um, is not something that I carried in the shop when I was running it, but it's it's a very popular tea. It's called puree, and some people call it puree or whatever. I always called it puree, but it's a it's a wonderful quality black tea. And um, you know, for some people, they um, are very their palate is very discriminating. They puree and a Darjeeling. I develop a palette uh, for identifying different teas, but not that fine a palette. Mm -hmm. Maybe Jen. I don't think I do either. I, I think maybe because I started in this order, I don't know if that had any effect on my ability to taste uh, in a discriminating way, but um, Personally, I don't see a whole lot of difference, but other people would know the difference between the two. It's a good quality tea. And if you like it, um, tell Jen. She might carry it. Yep. Okay. I'm writing down a question. Okay. So is our uh, Darjeeling just about ready? Almost. We got about 40 seconds to go. So you seconds. can see it's brewing in the pot. We got these glass pots. Hopefully you can see it pretty well. I'm going to, uh, you can see the color coming up and you can hopefully see the leaves floating in the water. Um, we may tilt the camera down. I really wanted to show you how the leaves expand when the water hits them. That's what brings out the flavor. Um, and I, I shared this in a demo I did last weekend. You really want to give your tea room to expand when that water hits it. So if you're using a tea ball infuser, you really only want to fill one half of it. You don't want to cram it full or um, the tea's not going to have enough room to grow. You're not going to get the best flavor out of it. Um, so, okay. So yeah. the three minutes is up. Does that look? Yeah. I, 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 the color. So I'm going to pour it through a strainer into the cup so that you can see what the color looks like in the cup. Cause we are going to compare all of the teas by color cause they are different. And so hopefully you can see that beautiful amber color of the black tea. Yeah. And let me just say this about what, what sets the Darjeeling apart from, let's say, an English breakfast. Um, Darjeeling is called the champagne of teas. And so this one is not going to come out to be as dark as an English breakfast would be. So it's just a beautiful color. It's very, uh, 
it's a wonderful accompaniment to um, just about anything on the tea table. It could be, I, I love starting out with the Darjeeling. I think it's wonderful with your savory course, um, but it's equally as nice with a sweet course. So it, it can go, you know, through all three or four courses that you're having at the table. Um, it, it, it might as well bring this up now that for me, I don't like spoiling a Darjeeling, in my mind it's spoiling, a Darjeeling with milk. Um, I think it it masks the wonderful flavor of that, that champagne of tea. Mm -hmm. I do like a little bit of sugar or sweetener in it. Um, I think it enhances the flavor in that case. Some people use lemon in it, and I think that's fine. I'm not a, um, a lemon person for tea, but, uh, and I think Jen even talked about this last week that uh, you should never use cream because there's a chance that you'll curdle uh, and you spoil your tea. But also the other thing about cream or half and half in my mind is that again, it masks the flavor, the beautiful flavor of your tea. And you really don't want to have that milky or creamy flavor in your tea. You want to be able to, to taste the true uh, nature of the tea. So my recommendation is not cream, not half and half, that you would stick with milk for yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, milk in an English breakfast is Perfect. pretty awesome. Yeah. Best tea with milk. Yeah. Any, any other breakfasts. And something else I wanted to I share want to about, um, and we may get a question about this, but let me go ahead and, and share this, that you've probably heard the phrase or the term uh, first flush or second flush with Darjeeling. It's really interesting because um, a lot of people, I even had a, a friend in England who, when she realized I was in the tea business, she said, you know, Marsha, all these years I've been drinking Darjeeling and I had no idea there was a first flush and a second flush. And what that means is that first flush is the very first pick of the Darjeeling. It's a very short season and it's the very best of the Darjeeling tea. So again, that one's probably a little more expensive. And then there's the second flush. And so that's the second picking, a little less expensive, um, still wonderful quality. So I would not turn down first or second flush of a Darjeeling. They're both wonderful, but sometimes you'll, you'll see that term and you, you know, might not know what that is. That's what it means. It's the, the, the period of time picked. when it's picked. Yeah. So we got a question on the temperature of the water. Yes. We've had several questions on what's the temperature of the water. And we did want to talk about that. Um, someone asked, uh, does boiling water, um, scorch the leaves or damage the leaves. Um, someone asked if we should put ice on the leaves before we do put the never heard no. Of that. I have never heard of that either. So um, I shared last week. There's a really good chart at the at artoftea.com that shows a, a, the temperatures of the water which are best for the different types of tea and also the brewing times. Um, it kind of, it looks like this, hopefully we've got the lights too bright. Hopefully you can see that it, you'll have to find it. Um, it's community tips, tea steeping chart of tea. I highly recommend you take a look at because it's the best chart that I found that the correct water temperature, for the different types of tea and the steeping times, um, because those do matter. Yeah. So for black tea, yeah. Let me let me give you a little a little condensed um, version of this. On the back of the um, packages of tea that Jen sends out to you, you'll see brewing a cup or a pot of tea on there, and. You might not. You might not yeah, the lighting is funny. It's kind of small. But she has the brewing instructions on the back in very simple, condensed terms. And basically, this is what you do. Now, again, for some 
who has a very discriminating palate and very discriminating taste with their tea, they're going to want to brew, they're going to want to bring their water to the precise temperature, as Jen mentioned on the chart. But an easy rule of thumb for you is black teas, bring your water to a rolling boil. And I'll talk about water in a minute. Bring your, bring your water to a rolling boil, pour the water over the leaves. And what happens is the leaves are shocked. And this is important. If, you're, if your water is not hot enough, the black tea and, and the oolong that we're going to talk about won't be shocked. And this is an important part of that brewing process is to shock those leaves. And they, it's like they come alive. And then you brew, in my, in my mind, you brew for three minutes. And that's on the instructions on the back of her bag. Um, I'm going to show yeah. an example. And uh, if, you have, if you have purchased tea in tins or whatever, very often they'll say for a black tea, three to five minutes. You can do that if you want. But if you, um, I think that people are more apt to want their tea at three minutes than five minutes. Here's the caution for you. For teas like black teas, and we'll talk about the green in a minute, but for the black teas, um, you don't, if, if you like a stronger tea, don't brew it longer, add more tea. This is, a, this is a rule of thumb for, for any tea, actually, that you add more tea, for instance, for the the five ounce cup, you could do uh, if stronger you two teaspoons if you want. But um, that's the recommendation that I, you know, the experience that I've had all these years that three minutes for black or oolong teas. And we're going to talk about oolong in a minute. Okay. So I'm hoping you can see this in the glass pot. So this is the English breakfast uh, dry in the pot boiling water. I'm going to pour it in. Hopefully you can see the leaves respond when the water, and of course there's steam now, so you can't see it, <laughs> but the leaves expand immediately. When, immediately as soon as that boiling water hits it and they just continue to grow as they steep. And you can see the color coming out already. It's only been like five seconds mm -hmm. and that beautiful amber color is coming out in that tea. Um, but you do on your black teas, you definitely want the hottest you water. You want the hottest water. And then moving on down, uh, and we'll talk about green tea. Uh, green tea and white teas, you want to have your water just short of boiling. And it is said that you, if you look at the water, you're going to see like fish, uh, like around the rim and everything. That's the right temperature. So if you don't have a thermometer that you can use to to gauge the temperature of the water, it's okay. And you don't have to be that um, that picky about it. I don't feel it's mainly looking at the water, and eventually you're gonna it's gonna become second nature to you. Rolling boil for black or oolongs, just short of boiling for green or white. And again, those instructions are on the back of your bag. Okay? okay. And then we'll talk about the others as we get to them. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. Now we're going to talk about oolong. Oh, you know what? I forgot to tell you one of the most important things about black tea, the processing that it goes through mm. after it's picked. What sets black tea apart is that it's fermented. This is the process it goes through. It's fermented and dried. We're going to get to oolong and is semi-fermented. It goes through a, a half of the, the process that the black tea does. And so it's a little bit milder. Um, and also another tip for you is that as you go in from black to oolong to green to white and so on, each one has a little less caffeine according to the color of the tea. So oolong would have a little less caffeine than black, a little milder in taste, but quite lovely, actually. And um, it's, it's one of my favorites. And the leaf is a little bit bigger. And um, you want to show them what that looks like? Yep. 
And this one is called, it's got a lovely name. Yes. Eight Immortals Dancing. Dancing. I'm pretty sure. Long. And this is from China. That's a nice tea. It is a nice tea. Okay. All right. All right. I'm brewing oolong. Yeah, brewing or oolong. Okay. Okay. So I hope you all have had a good day today. We've been busy getting all set up, doing all of our testing and everything, and kind of our choreography of how this is going to work out for you. Um, and again, I'm I'm saying hi to um, Marlene, my friend. She's local. She's a dear friend of mine. Let's see what else. Um, we can talk about. You, you started to talk about caffeine. Uh, yeah. While we wait for this to brew, Claire, mm -hmm. um, some folks have asked about caffeine content. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. And I just said that. Yeah. Yeah. That um, the darker the tea, the more caffeine. Um, and, you know, I've mentioned this on my Facebook page. I have discovered, and, you know, again, it could be partly because of my age, but I have found for me and, and, People are different. Some people, like Jen's been drinking a lot of tea lately. And are you drinking caffeinated tea all through the day? Or uh, No, I start with black tea in the morning, and then I switch to green uh, about midday. Okay. And I might drink green tea into the mid-afternoon, and then I switch to rooibos or herbal later in the afternoon. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what I do, too. Um, I can drink white or green tea like through dinner time but after dinner i cannot drink any tea except for herbal but coffee i can so i don't know whether it's my body has built up because i i'm an equal opportunity and biber by the way i do <laughs> like i start coffee. i actually start with coffee <laughs> so shh, yeah because some people say shame on you but no <laughs> um but i think my body tolerates caffeine from coffee and so I suspect, even though I've seen studies that don't back this up necessarily, that there's um, more caffeine in tea, but I, I don't think that's the case. I think it's my body. So it really is a personal thing. If you, you know, if your body's telling you that you can't drink caffeine, any caffeine after like noon or something, then don't do it. Switch to herbal or rooibos. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And I do carry a few decaf black teas. Um, yeah. I, I know that folks like a traditional black tea like Earl Grey or an English breakfast, and I do carry those in decaf. And the way that they're decaffeinated is a carbon dioxide process that the vendor uh, does. I'd have to read more into it, but it's not chemically um, treated to make it decaffeinated. Right. It's a gas. It's the... I'd have to read more in depth on how they do it, but um, yeah, it's a CO2 process. It's a CO2 process, and it's it's a natural process that they run the leaves through that makes them decaffeinated. It's yeah, magic. as opposed to um, using formaldehyde, which you know, ick. yeah. So no, none of the teas that Jen carries use the formaldehyde process at all. It's all the CO2 process. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And okay. And so we've got. 18 seconds left on our oolong tea. You can kind of see it's not quite as dark as the Darjeeling. Right. Because it is a more delicate black tea. Um, and five more seconds and I will, oops, I didn't empty that. Here, I'll do it. And I will pour that. Get the timer off. And then we'll show this in the cup. It's similar yep. in color, but it is a little bit lighter in color. Maybe you can grab the Darjeeling mm -hmm. and we can show them the difference. So hopefully you can see that the oolong that I'm holding is, pull it back a little bit. And there you go. The oolong I'm holding is a little bit lighter than the Darjeeling black. And so it is a more delicate black tea. And this is five ounces of tea. 
Okay. Okay. Wonderful. All, All right. right. Should we move on to the green? Now we're on the green. Okay. Now, I know that there are a lot of you out there who are afraid to try green tea or you've had green tea and you don't like it. And let me assure you that green tea is one of the most wonderful varieties of tea out there. Yep. And the reason why a lot of people uh, have been turned off by it is my guess would be that it hasn't been brewed properly or it's been brewed too long. And that's the real cautionary tale with, with green tea. You must not brew it too long. Now, again, just a reminder that Black tea, you bring to a rolling boil the water. Green tea, just short of the boil, the rolling boil. And so here's the tip number one. That will um, uh, help in the brewing process so that the leaves aren't shocked as much as the black teas are. Um, and then the other thing is that it's important to measure your tea accurately. So it's one teaspoon per five ounce cup but also don't overbrew. And I believe in three minutes for green tea as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And so you would brew that um, very carefully. And then the, the other key is when you're in a tea room, let's say if you, if you decide you're gonna be bold and you're gonna have a green tea, ask them, don't be shy about doing this, ask them if they could bring the pot with uh, the, the leaves removed so that they brew the green tea in their kitchen and then they remove the leaves and bring the tea without the leaves in there because the longer the leaves stay in the pot the more bitter the tea is going to become and so and that's true for all teas it, it, it really if, if you don't like your black tea bitter when you've gone to a tea room you know, first cup is beautiful, perfect, but then your second or third cup you find is a little bit bitter. It's probably because the leaves are still in the pot. They're still steeping. Yeah. So if that is something that you're sensitive to, it, it absolutely you can ask them to remove, remove the leaves the yeah. from the pot before they bring it to you at the table. Yeah. Now, very often in the tea rooms, they will bring another pot of hot water or they'll come to the table with hot water to refresh your pot. And that's fine with the, it's fine with the black teas and it's fine with herbals, but not with the green tea. I, I really recommend that you do ask them to uh, remove the, uh, the tea leaves. And so this one that Jen is going to brew is the, um, her wonderful Pride and Prejudice blend, and she can tell you about that one. Yes, so this is a beautiful green tea, peach flavor. It does have pecans in it, and so if you're allergic to, uh, actually, no, that's pecans. If you're allergic uh, to nuts, then you, you, I'm afraid you won't be able to drink this one, but um, it's got peach and papaya in it. It's a beautiful green tea. It was one of my favorites that I was drinking this summer. Hopefully you can see the leaves. Um, they're kind of flat, uh, nice green color. It's a very fresh tea. I wish you could smell it. It smells so good. It's, it's one of my favorites. I've already um, used up all I need uh, all that I more. got for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, it's a beautiful tea. So I'm going to brew. I'm going to start this to brew while she talks about the other green teas. The other green teas. Yeah. I want to say hi to um, uh, Debbie. And there was, oh, Sherry, my dear friend, Sherry. Hi, Sherry. Okay. So this is the Pride and Prejudice blend that she is um, brewing for you. And now, again, real different. These, these are all totally different, but you might find a favorite of green tea that you kind of latch on to. And um, I love Jen's green teas. Let me just put it that way, because she's got some wonderful flavorings with um, almond um, one of these, the, the roasted almond is so good. She has another one, almond cookies, that is a holiday tea. And, uh, but let me start with, um, two very different ones, the dragon pearl, which is from China and it's a rolled, it's a rolled tea. And this is a premium green tea. It's wonderful. And then Genmaica 
is really, um, really kind of cool. And Jen was telling me a story about it today. You tell them what you told me about it. So Genmica is a green tea that has um, roasted brown rice added to it. And where, what I read about it when I was looking it up is they added the brown rice to stretch the tea. So poorer families who uh, couldn't afford to drink the straight green tea would add this roasted brown rice to it. It would not only um, enhance the flavor of the tea, but it would help stretch the tea yeah. um, for their family so they could get a lot more out of it. And so that's what hopefully you can see. That's the Genmica and that's the Dragon Ball. Dragon Pearl. The Dragon Pearl. Yeah. And the Genmica <laughs> is popular in um, uh, Japanese and Chinese uh, restaurants because it's wonderful with their um, their food. Their fried food. With their fried foods. Yeah. Yeah. Like tempura. Yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah, it's real popular there. And then uh, these two. Um, okay. Gunpowder green actually is one of my favorites. I love it. Again, you have to be really careful that you don't overbrew gunpowder. Uh, but it is, um, it was named because of the teeny tiny little rolls of green leaves yeah. that look like gunpowder pellets. And so, uh, but again, you've got to be careful to have those leaves removed from the pot. Uh, after it has finished brewing, but it's a wonderful, um, wonderful tea. I just love that one. Mm -hmm. And then this is one of my absolute favorites of Jen's, which is the roasted almond. Yeah. Uh, you know, again, if you've got nut allergies, this would not work for you, but it, I, it has lovely large green leaves and um, big uh, slivers of almonds in there. So yeah. for fall, it's just wonderful. It smells really good too. Yeah. Okay. So we've got about 15 seconds left. You can see here. I'll swirl the water up. Hopefully you can see that tea, how it's bloomed in the water. I might dump this tea into a dish after I pour the tea mm -hmm. so that we can see what the leaves look like mm -hmm. wet. Okay. Because I did want to show you how much the leaves grow once they've been brewed. And if you've been drinking tea, then you already know. Oops, it's getting stuck in the... Yeah, the leaves have... They're stuck in have the blossomed. spout. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's beautiful. They're stuck in the pot. You need a spoon? <laughs> They're all stuck in the spout. There we go. I think I've got mm -hmm. enough to show twigs. <laughs> All right. Okay. So here's the dry tea. Here's how much it's grown from the water. You can see, and even the fruit expanded, the dried fruit that was in there, you can see that's expanded as well. And so then this is your beautiful green tea. It's a lighter color. It's not green, it's kind of a yellow. Um, color. Hopefully you can see that. I'm getting glare off of the light. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see how different it is from the Darjeeling black. Um, that's a beautiful color. It is. And, and it smells so good. It does. And personally, my recommendation, especially with something like the Pride and Prejudice blend that Jen has here with its a little bit fruity and nutty flavor. It's wonderful um, with scones. Uh, you've got the the richness, the um, uh, wonderful flavor uh, and consistency of a scone and having a really nice light tea like this only adds to the flavor of the scone. It doesn't take away, it doesn't overpower. You, you want to enjoy that wonderful scone with cream and jam. And this is a, a wonderful tea to have with that. And that's one thing that, that I would do um, in years past was to help people pair particular teas with food. And I just love that aspect of it, creating that wonderful combination. So that's, that's a good one. Okay. What are some other flavored um, oh, green? So many. Green. Well, the apple cobbler. The apple cobbler. Oh my goodness, it's so good. It's so people. good. Okay, so the apple cobbler tea is um, 
a roasted apple green that looks a lot like the roasted almond green, um, but it's got apple bits in it and mixed with, it's actually mixed with a, a black tea mm -hmm. a little bit that's got cinnamon and some other secret flavors that uh, I'm not going to tell you about. <laughs> Yeah, we have our secrets. I have the blending secrets. <laughs> um, but the um, apple cobbler is probably my favorite oh, of the new it teas. Is, it is so good. I've, I've so drunk good. a lot of that. Yeah. And then the other uh, new green tea is the pecan pumpkin tart. Yeah, that's a good one too. Which is also really good. Um, and, you know, I, I love it because it's a, it's a wonderful balanced tea. Mm -hmm. It's not super heavy on the pumpkin flavor. If you're not a real fan of pumpkin, it's just, it's a great balance. Yeah. I like, yeah. like that one a lot. Thank you. Yeah. I like it too. She's doing great. Thanks. If I do say some myself, okay. All it's right. not about me. It's about her. <laughs> <laughs> Teamwork. 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 Hey, I'm taking what you built and I'm, I'm moving us <laughs> She's forward. She's running with it. So, <laughs> okay. So, uh, someone asked if I can list all my teas by category. Um, no, <laughs> off the top of my head. Oh my uh, word. I have a hundred plus teas yeah. just listed on the website right now. They are listed by category on the website. Yeah. So if you go to the website into the shop on the left, there's a menu. If you click on the teas men, uh, line, it'll drop, it'll, it's a drop down menu that'll show you all the different categories. Of, of all the teas there right too many yeah too many too for many. me to name yeah <laughs> right here but but there there's a good complement of each variety that we're talking about mm -hmm. and one of the things you might need to explain in time or now if you want to um, is the difference between a listing of just a black tea and a specialty right so there are basic black teas. They're unembellished. I haven't done anything to them except move them from the package from my vendor to a jar on my shelf. Um, and it gets packaged for you straight up English breakfast, Irish breakfast, Earl Grey, Cremal Grey, the Mim Darjeeling. Um, I don't carry oolong yet, but if, uh, if you guys let me know that you're interested in oolong, I can look into carrying some oolong. Um, and um, I don't think there are any straight green. I don't know. Well, you, you have the gun. gun I do have, I haven't listed the gunpowder. I do have gunpowder. I also have the ginmica. Yeah. I, I should list them. Uh, I just haven't gotten around to doing it yet. But you um, know what? Unless you're a real purist, um, and, and I would certainly recommend the gunpowder gun powder. and the ginmica. Um, but. It, the flavored greens, oh, oh my they're gosh, so good. they're so good. They if you're really if you're not sure that you're gonna like green tea, start with a flavored. Yeah, because it, the flavors uh, do soften yeah. the green tea a little bit. Um, I think because green we, tea is a different flavor than if you're used to drinking a black tea. Green tea is different. Yeah, and let me just say this too: no milk in green tea. Yeah, no, 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 no. milk. A little bit of sugar is good. Um, as a matter of fact, I was gonna say something else about that. Um, Hmm, maybe it'll come back to me. Mm -hmm. But I did want to tell you a little bit more about green tea, which I meant to do at the very beginning, that um, green tea does primarily come from Japan and China and has been known in, in their uh, realm of tea over there that it does have medicinal properties. Now, one thing that I learned early on in the tea business and passed this information on to Jen is that um, as a business, uh, she really can't claim that any of the teas have health benefits. Now, we can talk about it, but like on the website or labeling or whatever, she can't claim that this tea has healthy benefits. And, and in fact, I had recommended to Jen that she not carry some of those herbals that claim to have health benefits because you just really, you get in trouble if you start making claims like that. So she doesn't carry any of those, those types of teas, but they are known to be, um, have a lot of healthy properties. Mm -hmm. And we talked about caffeine. Well, let's talk about the, the other end of it, the, the polyphenols and the, the antioxidants and what have you. Um, all teas have healthy properties. 
Uh, you do have to be careful in having too much caffeine because of the tannins, which as Jen experienced when she was in college, it leached the iron out of her body. So you have to be careful, you know, everything in balance. But um, as we're getting into now, we're getting into the, the green and the white and the rooibos and the herbals, um, more healthy properties, actually, more antioxidants. And so uh, that's something to keep in mind if you're looking for, for things that are really healthier to drink. And then green tea is, um, again, a reminder, the water is just short of a boil. Don't brew for longer than three minutes. And you'll hear of different um, types of uh, names attached to green tea, like Hyson Green, Dragonwell Green, Sencha Green. A lot of Jen's teas are, are created with a base of Sencha tea. Hyson, actually, if you want a little tip, Hyson Green was one of the teas that was dumped into the Boston Harbor. Uh, along with, it was said that it was Darjeeling, but it was actually Hyson and Bohe, which is a totally different tea, which I just love. And um, there was one other, and now I can't remember. can't remember, but Hyson Green and Bohe were two of the ones that were dumped in Boston Harbor. So they had great value and great popularity. All right, I think that's it about green. Okay, yes. Okay, so uh, somebody asked what the website address is. I'm a terrible website owner that I haven't mentioned this before now. We've been doing this for an hour, and the website is tforallreasons.com. Um, all one word, tforallreasons.com. It will take you to a homepage. You'll see the picture of mom and me on there, and then if you scroll down, you'll see the categories of tea, and that's how you can get into the shop. Um, and then once you're in the shop, that menu is on the left, like I talked about, and, um, and then from there, you different categories of the teas yeah yeah awesome so uh and and the pictures of all the teas like all of my teas i try to take really good accurate photography um and so i i think that they're pretty good right mm -hmm. they that that's what the teas look like uh oh yeah you're gonna get is great them. so yeah um yeah so happy shopping yeah <laughs> we, we have a motto and i actually have it on a plaque um in my office but it says uh, shop like you mean it shop like you mean it yes okay. and then someone else asked um about heating the water in a pot kettle versus the microwave so microwave is not ideal but if you're in a place where you can't do a pot on the stove or you don't have an electric kettle handy and i do recommend if you can afford it they're not that expensive anymore. I think you can get an electric kettle for 30 or 40 yeah, bucks. Yeah, on Amazon, they've got them and, and um, everywhere. So, yeah. Target, you can find them everywhere. Target, yeah, they're Walmart, great. they're everywhere. And I do recommend it. My husband and I um, are going to wear out our kettle because it goes all day. But, um, but if you're in a place where there's a microwave, that will do. You just really want to make sure that water is boiling. Um, typically if I'm heating water in the microwave, I'm going to give it at least two to three minutes in the microwave, but you got to watch it. Yeah. Um, I don't recommend, but I don't microwave. recommend the microwave, no. but if you're, if that's where you are, you can make it work. And yeah. Can, I mean, like if you're at work and that's the only place that you can get, um, water boiled, then okay. Yeah. But it's not ideal. It's but, not ideal. And I showed you on the Facebook page the other day, my wonderful new whistling kettle. Isn't it gorgeous? So Beautiful. this is always you know, a, a wonderful um, standby for um, for uh, boiling your water is a good old whistling kettle on the stove top. On the stove top. On the stove top. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me see. Oh, and you know what, Jen? I thought of something else that might be interesting. Yeah. And um, you might even get a question about it. You know, we live in an area where the water is very hard and other places have very soft water and it really does affect the taste of your tea. There are some tea companies that, that um, have their tea, uh, that the tea that they carry in their tea rooms and, and a good example is London. London's water is horribly, horribly hot, uh, hard. And in fact, when, when we've stayed there and brewed our own tea, in our room or, or um, flat, uh, 
you get scum around the mug or the cup and that indicates that the water is hard and it's but they most times carry tea that is adaptable for that it's it's the best to brew in hard water i don't see that in the united states that much um, i think in new york maybe i've seen it but so therefore the um, alternative is to use bottled water um, natural spring water uh, for um, brewing your tea and that's what the hot that's what the tea rooms in london do they don't use their tap water they use um, what they call still water out of a out of a bottle so um, so if you have a hard water problem and perhaps don't have a water softener then i would use bottled water and um, now i have not detected any noticeable change in the the taste of the tea by using the water softener even i don't have a water you don't softener have one. i use tap water yeah but we definitely you know there's no scum and we haven't tasted any difference no. in the water at all so we're yeah. fine with that so i just thought i would bring that up because definitely in our area those of you viewers who were on with us tonight and have wondered about the hard water um i would use um i would use bottled water but i use tap water yeah so well and maybe your water where we are our water is not bad yeah i ours, think it is hard water but it you yeah it ours is really hard here so yeah. okay we're on okay. granite um okay and someone asked someone from the uk hi hey Lovely you're here yeah thanks um, for joining us uh asked if i sell to the uk do i ship to the uk i don't think i'm allowed am i allowed to send it to You're the allowed. uk yeah, i am yeah. they can receive yeah i thought you told me years ago that no it, can't. that was a different foreign yeah. country yes i will <laughs> sell to the uk um i have not set up shipping for the uk in my website but uh i will do that because i would love to sell to the uk um yeah i would love to get my teas over there and you can tell me if it's any good yeah right. <laughs> so uh who is that by the way uh, lisa or oh, lisa okay Yep. Awesome. Yeah. So yes. Nice for asking, also, yeah. Thank you for asking that. I learned something new yeah. that I can actually export my teas to the UK. So that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, and I, I would be happy to do that. Yeah. That's fantastic. I did send to Canada um, this week and that was exciting. Yay, Canada. <laughs> um, okay. White teas. White teas. Yes. And the one we're featuring tonight is Jen's Melon Pear White, another delicious tea. I love white tea. I, I really, I think probably that's my favorite. I I'm partial, partial of it. Yeah. And I'm it looks, white. it looks very similar to green tea. So don't be deceived. It's not actually white. Right. <laughs> yeah. The leaves, the leaves appear to, to be a little bit darker, but they brew a beautiful, beautiful. color. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love it because it's so delicate and uh, brings out the the flavor of the like in this one bring, really brings out the lovely flavor of the melon um and uh so okay. yeah Definitely. um so white tea is a delicate and and kind of like a honey like flavor um and it contains the highest antioxidant of all uh, antioxidant levels of all of the teas that we've talked about so far it's only harvested in the early spring. And in fact, the only leaves that are harvested are the very tip top leaves of the bush, of the Camellia sinensis bush. So they're just the very top leaves. So what does that say to you? Well, what it says is that they're not harvesting as much. And so it's more um, limited and more expensive. So that's really, you wonder why white tea is so expensive is because they just can't harvest as much of it and it's limited. Most of the white teas come from China and Japan. However, more and more are coming into India uh, because it is so popular. And um, now another question that may arise and this, you know, <laughs> certainly was true in England during World War II and World War I. But uh, when tea was rationed, many times they would double brew 
you know, they would get the first brew out of the tea. Oh, and we should talk about decaffeinated that way. Yes. Um, but they would, they would brew one pot of tea and save the leaves and then they would brew another pot. Well, they were trying to stretch the, the tea leaves. It is said that you can do that with white tea pretty effectively. And I haven't, I can't say I've really done that, but if you're trying to stretch it because it is so valuable, you know, go ahead and, and do that. Uh, I'd be careful not to brew too long, but um, certainly worth a try. Um, and so what I had um, said to Jen was that we should talk about, uh, you know, your question about caffeine. Well, one really great tip to reduce the caffeine in any of the teas uh, from black on down, you want to tell them how to do it? Okay. You brew it for a minute and then you dump the water, keep the leaves, dump the water, and then brew them a second time like you would normally. Dumping that first minute dumps the caffeine. You're going to get like 99% of the caffeine out of your leaves if you dump that first brew the first minute. It, it just dumps it out. And so then you can brew them, uh, brew your leaves like normal after mm -hmm. that, and you've got a nice decaf tea. Yeah. We've got about three seconds, and our white tea is going to be finished. Oh, let me empty this. And while I pour that, uh, someone asked about well water. Well water. Um, I would think that would be good. I would think it would be good too. It's because uh, it's not city water, right? Right. Oh, look at that. That looks nice. Okay. And then someone else asked, um, how long do my bags of tea last on the shelf? Ah, um, we say two years. Yeah. Once I open the package, the, it, the air gets to it and I oh, do try yeah. to keep it airtight and in a cool, dark place, um, in my tea office. Um, but once you open that package, that shelf life starts ticking, but, um, but typically, and I package to order. So when you place an order with me, I, that's when I package up your tea. So it's not, I don't have packages of tea sitting on a no. shelf, uh, wasting away. Um, I, your order comes into me and I package it that day or the next day and ship it out to you immediately. And so pretty much from that moment, it's got about two years. Yeah. Depending it, on how you keep it. Yeah. And if, if I would say if it's unopened for two years, but once it's opened, even in the, the Ziploc, I would say about a year. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not going to last that long. You're going to love it so much. You're going to drink it. But, you know, that's the beauty about a business like tea for all reasons that you won't find in a lot of the other tea businesses. They're not doing the, the orders um, as they come in. They've got, you know, it's stacks and stacks, stacks of, of packages of packaged up and ready to go. Now they're bigger businesses, obviously, but yeah. um, this is the beauty of tea for all reasons. You're getting it right, fresh. right, fresh it's made fresh. for you. Yep. Okay. So here's the white tea. You can see it's similar in color to the green tea. It's actually a little darker. It does look, it looks, it, well, you know what? I think, um, yeah, it does look a little It looks darker. a little darker. Mm -hmm. it, it may not be easy to see on camera and I can't tilt it enough. It's almost a, it's got a kind of an amber. Color. It's more amber than yeah. the green tea. It's wonderful. Yeah. Um, and it smells really good. It also, now I will say this, it also depends on the components, the other components it, you have. It in does. There. They can affect, they can affect the color. Like for instance, the pecan pumpkin tart green tea has hibiscus in it and it, and that tea is actually pink. Yeah. So if you buy that tea, don't be shocked when it brews up pink because that hibiscus is going to turn that tea pink. Yeah. It's, um, it's all in the components. It's in the components. Um, my, um, my all time favorite white tea. And I, I'm a little bit prejudiced because this was one that I created, um, for the Royal wedding, actually, what was that? Uh, like eight or nine years yeah, ago. Yeah. Something yeah. Like yeah. Something like that. Um, and it's a white tea, white raspberry tea, and it actually has dried raspberries in it. And so it does have a little hint a of little pink, pink in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And so you can see how much the 
tea expanded. Um, so here's the dry leaf. Hopefully you can see that. And then the wet leaf out of the pot. Mm, smells so good. And then we were going to talk about those other two. Yes. The, um, so yeah, white, you talk about white tea, and let me get my notes, because I know this, but I still need the notes. So there are two common varieties of white tea. Um, the, the gold standard of the white teas is called silver needle tea, and it's, it looks exactly what it sounds like. That's this tea right here, um, silver needle, and um, it is... Um, it's made using only the silver colored buds of the tea, a certain uh, variety of the Camellia sinensis plant. And um, it's, it's got a light sweet flavor and it's usually golden in color and it has kind of a woodsy aroma to it. Um, and then the other one is white peony tea and that's the smaller leaf on the right. And um, I drank some of that the other day and it's delicious. And it is um, made using, it uses a combination of leaves and tea buds, um, the young tea buds. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a little more affordable than the silver needle. Right. So like where Mim Darje the Darjeeling is the champagne of black teas, silver needle is the champagne of white teas. Um, and the, the white peony has a stronger flavor than the silver needle. The sil silver needle is a really delicate mm. white tea. Um, I mean, all white teas are delicate. Yeah, but you can tell by the, the lightness of yeah, the leaf. Yeah, can't see it. Yeah, the lightness of the leaf that yeah. it's going to come out to be it's very a, light. It's a very delicate tea. Anyway, they're both really good. Um, yeah. And so okay. the, those are those two varieties. All right. Okay. Great. All right. Hey, I had a question. Angela asked if we, if I was going to have any more of the Typhoon tea kettles for sale. I only had the one for sale last week. And um, I've got to admit to you that they are really hard to find in this country. And I searched, I scoured the internet to find this new one because I wanted it to match my beautiful bread box back there that Jen had bought me, I think for my birthday. Yeah, a couple years ago. A couple years ago. And I had been scouring and finally found that one and had the white one. And so I can't promise that I'll have more of the Typhoon teapots or of Jen would, but you can go online, um, go to Typhoon Tea and see if you can find any. Amazon, I think only had one, which was the kind of a powder blue, which is beautiful, but um, just do it, do a search yourself because I, it took me two years to get this one, to finally find one. And the white one was easier to find, but um, so I can't promise that I'll have any more, but I'm always on the lookout. And to be honest with you, I was hoping to be back in London <laughs> this <laughs> fall and I was going to do a search there, um, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. So. Yeah. Anyway, okay. uh, someone asked if I um, do samplers of random teas from my shop. Yes, there is a listing in the shop of uh, where you can choose a custom set of six teas in a sample. Um, any, any of the teas from my shop, any six, you can select and I'll do a custom sampler for you. Just like the fall sampler, six half ounce bags of whatever teas you're interested in. If you go to the menu, look for the sampler category. I have other samplers as well for different collections of teas that um, mom created and that I've added to. Uh, like there's a Downton Abbey collection, there's a Jane Austen collection, there's Doctor the Who. Doctor Who collection for the fellow Doctor Who nerds. Um, Outlander collection for Outlander fans, um, the fall favorites. I did a summer sampler. I'm going to do a holiday sampler 
Yeah, someone just asked, I think it was Darlene asked if you're going to have Christmas blends. Christmas blend, I'm working on the Christmas blends. I, I, I've i got orders of tea coming in in the next week or two, or two and oh. I'm going to start blending Christmas blends. People, people, people. Oh my yeah. gosh. Good stuff's Good coming. Good stuff is coming. Honestly, Jen has so many holiday blends to offer. And so just, just stand by because... Yeah. There. Christmas is coming. Christmas is coming. So yeah. and we all need a little Christmas cheer right now, oh don't we? Oh my goodness, yes. So, so yeah, so I'm going to be blending the holiday blends um, over the next month and I'll, I'll be sure that those get listed. Some I'll start listing them. The ones that aren't already listed, I'll start listing those probably mid to the end of October, maybe. Um, maybe mid, sooner. maybe sooner. <laughs> depends on, depends on my day job. Yeah. I do have a job, so and a, a job job. So um, yeah, so I'm hoping mid October to start uh, listing those on the website. And I, you know, every day I post something about a tea that I'm sipping, blended, whatever. So when you start seeing those, you know that they're going to start coming to the shop, right? Yeah. Great, yeah. I'm looking forward to them myself. Me too. Okay. Because I there are a bunch that I haven't tried yet, so yeah. I'm excited to All try right. them. Okay. Okay. So next up is the rooibos. The rooibos. We love. I love rooibos, rooibos. and that's how you say it. Rooibos. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's not. Spelled, not yeah, it's not rooibos. 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 Is yeah. it me or you? Are you talking about it? Oh, you can talk about. No, it. no, no. You go. Oh well. You know what? I'll talk about the basic rooibos. Yeah, you can talk then. about the other two. Okay. Okay. So rooibos is um, gets its name from the red bush. And it comes from South Africa. It has, uh, it is naturally decaffeinated. So really, uh, if you're, yeah, sure if you're um, wondering, it really is an herbal. Yeah. Um, it's people call it a tea, rooibos tea, but it is an herbal because it's naturally decaffeinated. The wonderful thing about rooibos is you can, you don't need to bring the water to a full boil. Yeah. You can just short of a boil, but you can't overbrew it. Yeah. It says on the um, packaging instructions, if you've ever bought it in the store, which I hope you don't buy, anymore. Buy I hope me. you buy it from Jen. Um, it says five to seven minutes and really it, it can be, if you if, forget if it, if you forget it, it's fine. You're it's, not overbrewing. It's very forgiving. It's very forgiving. It's wonderful as a hot tea. It's wonderful as an iced tea. Mm -hmm. Um, I serve, we have a, a small group that meets here um, every week and I usually do an, a rooibos uh, because it is decaf and we'll have it hot or iced or whatever. Yeah. The flavors are wonderful. Yeah. And so that's the rooibos, that's red rooibos. Um, it's the red bush. Yep. Yep. Right. Okay. okay. All right. You want to talk right. about the others? So, and um, so red bush rooibos has been out for a long time and now you're starting to see some green rooibos and it is from the same plant and it's just how they process it much like black tea green tea white tea is all in how it's processed same thing with rooibos so rooibos is actually um, cut bruised aired and watered before being left to dry and oxidized in heaps um, so that's how, and, and then that process turns those leaves, the little needles red. That's where they get the red. The green rooibos, that process is not done. And so they are not oxidized. And so you can see here in this one, hopefully you can see that. This is green rooibos. This is my peach berry um, that was really popular this summer. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. It's one of yeah. my favorite yeah, rooibos. And I really love green rooibos. It's a, a little bit milder flavor than the red rooibos. Um, uh, it's, it's really good. So that's what that looks like. And you can see the difference between the green, which is fresher than the oxidized red. Yeah. Right. And then there's another plant um, that is similar and very often blended with rooibos, and that's honeybush, also from South Africa. It's a little bit of a, um, and I don't have any honeybush with me, but it is, it looks similar to um, the green, the green rooibos, yeah. and it is milder like the green rooibos. I think it's sweeter a little bit. Yeah, it is. Um, it, it's almost got a honey yeah, it's, it. um, which 
That's why it's called honey bush. Exactly. Um, and it has lower tannin mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. Honey bush is really good. Um, and I, I, I do have a couple teas that have honey bush in it, yeah. but I don't have any straight honey, straight bush, honey teas. bush. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Someone asked, um, and this, this is, um, when they use tea bags, um, she has more control over the strength of her tea as opposed to the loose tea in, in the, um, the teapot. Let me say something about tea bags. Yeah. And I'll brew this. Yeah. Um, oh, need that. it is, uh, it is really a well-known fact that tea bags are made up of what they call the fannings. When tea is put through the fermenting process, they, they use like, um, what do I want to say, screens. They lay them out on the screens and what falls through the screens to uh, underneath, um, one would hope it's not just a bare floor that they sweep up. It's it, they put something down under there. But what winds up underneath all of those leaves that falls through the screens is what is called fannings. It's the fannings that they put into the tea bags. So you've you've probably noticed in tea bags that the tea does tend to look very fine. It's not necessarily ground up but it is the fannings from the floor. So it's not the best quality of the tea. And so we, um, that's not to say that we're absolute purists, that we never ever would have a tea bag in a teacup or a teapot. We've, we've had yeah. tea bags. I had bag tea today. Yeah. But just so you know that it is not the best quality. You're not getting the best quality. Um, and, um, and also if you're using a tea bag, you don't want to dunk, just be patient. That's one thing about tea. It's wonderful just to be patient and wait for the wonderful reward at the end, but uh, don't dunk it up and down. And then they also say when you're using a spoon, um, I won't demonstrate, but, but don't, don't wrap your spoon around it to, you know, it's kind of, especially in a tea room, you don't want to oh, do that. Oh, I did that today. You did? <laughs> I did. That's, a That's how I do it. Well, you can do it at home. I didn't home. have a squeezer. <laughs> That's why we have squeezers. That's why we have squeezers. <laughs> but, well, don't do it in the tea room. <laughs> no, you didn't watch me? No. Oh, you might not have been down here when I was. You can do it in your own house. Oh, yeah. But anyway. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so I am currently brewing. This is the rooibos. And what I'm brewing is Mrs. Pat Moore's Pudding, which is from the Downton Abbey Collection. It is a wonderful... Um, rooibos, persimmon flavored rooibos, and you can smell that persimmon. Yeah, That's a piece of persimmon it's right there. So good. Um, it's a really good, awesome tea. And it, I actually find that uh, it needs a little bit of sugar, this particular one, because persimmon is a tart. It's a it's a tart fruit mm -hmm. if you're not familiar with it, and um, and the sugar rounds out that tartness a yes. little bit. Um, in the tea, but it is a delicious one. And uh, yeah, hey, someone had a great um, comment to make that um, it was um, Beth. Thanks for joining us, Beth. She mentioned that she got a um, tea kettle for Christmas last year, and it actually has the temperature. She had yeah, the option there of are, the different temperatures. Yeah, there are kettles that will monitor your yeah. you know, monitor your temperature. I just I bought a cheap one. And so it basically comes to a rolling boil. Yeah. Although I do tend to take it off of the heating element early mm -hmm. if I'm doing a green or a white tea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's good. That's good. Uh, and I, I just stop it before it gets to that rolling boil um, if I know that I'm doing a green or a white tea. Otherwise, I let it go. Yeah. For black tea and rooibos, I let it go. Yeah. And someone also asked again, and we, we did touch on this earlier, whether this is... Um, from um, Jana Lynn, mm -hmm. um, thank you for joining us tonight. She asked about using filtered water or um, spring water. And I would say, you know, if you're in a hard water area, you could use either one and that yeah. would be a great alternative. Yeah, so. filtered water is fine. Yeah. 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 And then someone asked about milk first or last. Oh, are you a... It's Lisa. Is it Lisa? Yeah. Oh, of course, because she's from <laughs> she's England. from England. So I read that the she reason should answer it. she should answer <laughs> but the i read that the milk first thing started uh 
to protect the delicate china. Yes. That the milk was put into the cup first to protect the china from the shock of the heat from the boiling tea. Yeah. Um, and so that's why they started the tradition of putting the milk in first. Yeah. But China is less delicate today. If you're drinking out of a mug, you don't need to worry about that. So it's your preference. Um, I found as a adding milk uh, that I want to control how much milk is in my tea. And so I actually pour my tea first and then I'll add my milk. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> yes, I saw that. Question. Hubby, you saw this one? I saw that. Question. Okay. Um, Hubby's bringing out questions that he's seeing because he's following us in his office. So Oops. Somebody asked um, whether or not it's important to preheat the pot. And uh, yes, yes, it is, especially if you're serving an afternoon tea where you have guests, it is important to heat up the pot. And the way you do that is not in the microwave. Yep. That's not going to do anything if it's empty, obviously. But what you do is go ahead and boil the water, um, fill your pot with um, boiling water, and let it sit for maybe five minutes. And then before you start to brew your tea, pour that out and start with fresh water. And that way your pot is nicely hot and it'll stay hot. Also tea cozies are wonderful to keep your tea hot. And uh, especially again, if you're having an afternoon tea where you're gonna be sitting and enjoying that tea for a while, um, a tea cozy is beneficial to that. So back, um, a while ago, many years ago, I had a friend who had her own tea room and she was telling me how she would, she was so careful about how she brewed the tea and she'd bring it out to her guests and in a pot. And she said, and it annoyed her because the first thing that a person would do was lift the lid. And she wanted to tell them, no, don't lift the lid. You want to keep the tea hot. You don't want to check on it. You're not going to really be able to see anything see unless it's a white pot, but let it steep. Let it have the full time it needs to steep. Don't be tempted to lift up the lid and um, uh, you'll get a better brew that way. Yeah. Okay. okay. So this is the brewed rooibos and you can see, well, I'm going to show you compared to the black that it is actually redder than, so this is the Darjeeling. They look similar on camera, but the rooibos is more red. And it, this actually looks a little bit cloudy. Um, it's not as clear. That's because of the white chocolate chips yeah. that are in that particular blend. Right. Um, yeah, so that's where any of the additives are going to affect the finished product of the tea. Right. That's definitely because of the chocolate that's in the, the blend, um, why it's not as crystal clear um, as it would be otherwise. Right. Yeah. And that and smells really good. Another thing I think we talked about or touched on a little bit about adding sweetener or what have you. Um, I always recommend that when you're trying something new, always try it without anything in it first and then add a little bit of sugar if, if you think it needs something. But I, I will say for any of, especially the flavored teas, any of the fruity teas or spicy teas, adding a a little bit of sugar just enhances the flavor. Mm -hmm. If you can't do it, that's fine. You you may have where you don't have a, a, a interest in any sweet, you know, uh, taste at all, and that's perfectly fine. But it really does enhance the flavor. Yeah. So, yeah. okay. So there was a question about what do you recommend for on the go tea strainers? So uh, tea sacks. <laughs> so yeah. so I I work at home most of the time, but I do go to an office uh, once a week and I take tea with me. And the way that I do that is, um, and I don't know, um, Darlena, if you were with us at the beginning when I showed the tea sacks, but I use these and I fill, I take four or five with me to the office uh, on the days that I go because I drink that much tea. And, um, I will fill the, the individual sacks up with the teas that I want to take with me that day. And um, I will staple them shut. Um, and then I just, uh, and we have an electric kettle at my office because uh, I'm not the only tea drinker. Um, and so I just put it in my mug. I pour the water over it and then I can pull the sack out. It's got the leaves. I don't have to worry about any leaves in my cup. 
and I've got a perfect mug of tea, um, yeah, loose leaf tea, and I don't, yeah, and they, they, these work great for on the go. Um, and you could carry a strainer around in your bag, but the this is the best That's way to get best. tea on the go. And to be honest with you, that is the best tool for brewing. I think for brewing the rooibos teas because because yeah, it's such a small it's leaf. such a small leaf the the little fine needles uh, you're you're just going to do a better job with the tea sacks than a strainer. However, if you prefer using a strainer, I mean one like this or uh, did, you, did you bring the pincer infuser? I did. Okay. Yeah, you want a really fine, a really fine, a really fine mesh. Yeah. Especially when you're doing the rooibos, because those those needles are so small that if you have a wider mesh than than this, they're going to go into your cup. Yeah. And a customer gave me a, a really valuable tip a few years ago, and I was so. I was so glad to receive it from her. She said that she had experimented a little bit because she was um, having problems with the rooibos coming through her pincer infuser, which is a tea ball that's on a, a clasp type yeah, I um, brought one. pincer. Yeah. She wet it first. Oh, that's smart. And then put the tea in. And, and then she they said, stick. And they stick. That did the trick. Yeah. So smart. if you have like a tea ball um, or a pincer infuser or even this one, wet it first and then strain the rooibos mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. Mm. we forgot to show the mugs <gasps> oh i just realized i've been sipping out of the mug i have mugs in the shop yes. and ignore the lipstick i have lipstick i have lipstick um, with the t for all reasons logo this is the 15 ounce mug and that's the 11 ounce mug and you will find these in the online they're store. awesome yeah they are awesome okay and now um it's only 835. Oh, we're, so doing, we're doing really doing well, well on time. Hopefully you're not bored. Um, okay. Okay. So herbals. Herbals yeah. are amazing. And they're like, so to me, uh, the first time I was introduced to herbal, we went to lunch at a friend's house and she served an herbal tea iced. Mm. And she chose a really flowery herbal tea. And I did not love it because I'm not, I don't like drinking flowers. And so that's not my favorite cup of tea, but I love, love a good fruity herbal tea. Yeah. Love. I, I can't get enough mm -hmm. of a good fruity herbal tea. And so, um, so herbal tea is not just flowers. I no. just want to, like, I always no. thought that herbals were mostly flowers, but they're actually mostly fruit. Yeah, it's fruit and herbs and spices and um, uh, fruit peels. Yeah, um, chunky dried chunky fruits. Fruit. Mm, so good, and they're they're just wonderful. Um, and you know, another little thing, I don't want to take away from your creative um, productions or uh, what you produce, but you know, if you're wanting to do a little bit of mixing of your own, like you want, you have, all you've got left is a black tea, a plain black tea, but you're really in the mood for a fruity tea. Take, take some, throw, throw an herbal in there. Throw an herbal in there. That's how I came up with some of my new blends. Yeah. So I was tasting samples and I only had a little bit and it wasn't enough for a full mug of tea. And I only had a little bit of this other, I'm like, okay, well they look like they might go Threw them both in the yeah. infuser. And I ended up with, Pecan pumpkin tart mm -hmm. and peach berry. That's how I ended up with peach berry. Um, yeah. So yeah, don't be afraid to mix some of those uh, those components. Um, even uh, a lemon peel that you peel off of the lemon yourself, you can add to a tea mm -hmm. or orange peel or lime peel. Oh, lime, oh. lime and rooibos is oh, good. Yeah, that's really good. That's good. So anyway. Okay, so we're going to show you some herbals. So um, so this is After Dark, which is an herbal that mom created. It's got chamomile and rose hips and apple and peppermint. peppermint. Hibiscus. Yeah, you know it better than I do. <laughs> Hibiscus. And, um, and so uh, it's a really, really nice herbal tea. You can smell the chamomile in it. It's good. It's good for nighttime, which is why it's called After, After Dark. Dark. Actually, I created this 
for self-defense because I was going through the beginnings of, you know what, and um, I was having trouble sleeping at night. And so I would get, you know, I, I was using a chamomile tea bag and I thought, no, I can do better than this. And so that's how that was created. And it's, it's probably besides the white raspberry uh, white tea, which is uh, the Royal Wedding Blend. This one is the, the one I'm most proud of because yeah, it's uh, good. It, yeah, it's a good tea. really happy with it. So I'm going to brew this one. But before we get to that, uh, you can talk about the Orange Grove Vanilla and the Vanilla Lemongrass. Right. And so I'll get this started. Yeah. So the, um, the Orange Grove Vanilla is a typical herbal tea, and it has just a wonderful... Uh, fruit bits in there with vanilla flavorings and um, just a, a great one. It's uh, It's got kind of a warm sense to it when you brew it. And then the lemongrass vanilla I love um, because of, now Jen's not a fan of lemongrass and you know, it's, um, I, I really, I really enjoy it. I don't know. I like it in food. You like it in food. I like Thai yeah. food, lemongrass, but I don't like to drink it in tea. Yeah. So anyway, you know, again, they're they're decaffeinated because they've never they're not from it's the not tea. It's not tea. It's not from the Camellia sinensis plant, and so they have um, wonderful um, healthy properties. And um, I think you would enjoy either one of those. Deb, they want to meet you. <laughs> You're going to have to come out and say hi. He's like, no way, man. Uh, and then someone said, is this being recorded and it will, will it be available later? Yes, absolutely. Hopefully, because we've posted this directly to Facebook, it will stay on Facebook. Um, but the, the app that we're using to broadcast this also records it. And, um, and so if I find that it's not showing up on Facebook, um, I will upload it to Facebook. Yeah. I'm also working on a YouTube channel where I plan on putting all of these live videos um, for posterity. And so uh, once I get that working and squared away, I will, um, dad's coming. Uh, <laughs> I'll let you guys know where the YouTube channel is yeah. so that you can su subscribe. Cause I have had the thought of, of pre-recording some videos that I can put on YouTube directly too at some point too. I haven't figured that out All right. at this point. All right. So we've got some more time on here. So yep. we're going to, we're going to bring in my better half, um, better known as, as hubby. As hubby. <laughs> this is my hubby. You got Hi folks. Get it. Oh, no, he's he's in. He's in. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. And, and I'm going to brag on him because, um, I could not have had better support through the years with this man. And uh, he was the one who every single day would go to the post office to mail boxes. And he printed labels, hundreds, thousands of labels for me. And yeah. um, there were many times that he complained. He complained. <laughs> he would want to drop kick the label maker through the window because it wouldn't cooperate. But he just always stuck with it. And I could not be you know, where I've got to be in the business without him. So yeah. he's my uh, partner in life for almost 54 years. So Yay. very thankful for him. And Thanks, Jen, Dad. Jen's dad. He's awesome. He's awesome. Yes. Yeah. And, and my hubby is, has now taken on the reins of driving to the post office. <laughs> Not every day, but um, he, he frequently drops packages off at the post office for me, although I do all the printing. Yes. He doesn't come did. into the tea room. Well, he set up a good system. He for did. You. Yes. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> yeah. So we got a couple more minutes on this because an herbal can brew, uh, it needs to brew longer because yeah. it's not tea. It needs to steep longer. So a good five to seven mm -hmm. minutes. I put five on the timer. We'll, we'll yeah. look at it at that point and see if it's ready yeah. to go. Now, that one, especially the after dark, is very light in color yeah. when it's brewed. Right. Um, but you can see the pink. Yeah, the hibiscus. the hibiscus is bringing the pink. Bringing the pink in there. Yeah. I love hibiscus. I had no. That's the only flower. I don't like roses. I don't like flowers. Yeah, she doesn't like roses. I don't like the rose, but I do. Really I me. do love the hibiscus. So I, we're almost done. So we if are. you guys have questions that we haven't addressed yeah, already, now's the time. Now's the time to to type those in, and we will answer questions. And. 
So I'm, this is still got a minute and a half. Titans. Y'all are the best. We're just so thankful for you all. We are. Um, you're such a support for all through the years for my business. Um, your wonderful loyalty uh, to me on the T for All Reasons Facebook page. We're up over 17,000 um, followers of T for All Reasons Facebook page. And now Jen's on the T for All Reasons group yeah. page. And y'all are just you know, helping her out there. Yeah, and, and then with the business, you know, honestly, she wasn't sure how things were going to, how the transition was going to take place. Um, but uh, y'all have been there and helped support her and it's been wonderful. Mm -hmm. And, and I told her, you know, um, things may be slow to begin with, but September 1st, things are going to really kick into high gear, which they have. They, yeah. Well, actually, since I, sent the first newsletter out, uh, the response has been overwhelming and yeah. I'm so grateful and um, y'all make it so much fun. I love being in the tea room. It's not work to me. Um, I absolutely love it. And so, um, yeah. yeah. So thank it's, you. It's great. Thanks so much. God has blessed us yeah. and I'm forever grateful. Yeah. And there was, okay. Did Something. this look done to you? Yeah. The after dark. Okay. Uh, so someone asked, uh, so my mom carried four ounce tins mm -hmm. in the online shop and back in the spring, oh, that is a very pretty color back in the spring, um, because of COVID issues, the vendor where she got the tins was not able to get the tins. They were back ordered for months, months yeah. and I wasn't even able to get them for wholesale orders. Um, and so uh, at that point, I had already considered changing the packaging. So those of you who purchased from my mom in the past probably realized when I held up the bags, they're not the same. Uh, it was time to move on to something else. Yeah, not yeah. the same bags that my mom did. Um, um, I wanted to have a good airtight bag yeah. um, so that on the shelf, your tea is going to stay fresh longer. Right. And so I looked in the Ziploc bags and I opted for the four ounces instead of the tins to do the bags for the same reason. And also um, they're lighter. Uh, the tins add weight for shipping. And so that's why I opted not to carry the tins any longer. But if you're interested in tins, like the person who asked the question was asking for gift giving, I am open to doing tins um, for custom orders. So if, if you yeah. want to do tins for gift giving, um, I, send me a message, a, a private message, and we can talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, I'd probably ask you, I hate to put a minimum on it, but I have to order a minimum number of tins. So, six um, so I'm thinking six minimum tins um, for a custom order. Um, but I'm willing to negotiate mm -hmm. and they would probably be white tins. Mom used to do gold tins, but I need to keep the gold tins for my wholesale customers. And, and those were the ones that she was having a hard time I getting. I could not get the yeah. gold tins. And so any tins that I do for retail custom orders would be white. Um, but they're still lovely yeah, as well. They are. And they would still look the same. They would have the ribbon and the labels like the tins that mom right. did, they, but they would be white. Um, can I put a plug in for you on um, wholesale? Yep. Because, um, you know, uh, as I transitioned through the business, there was a point at which I sold the retail and to, because I was working 16 hour days and I needed to cut back. So I sold the retail and then um, to focus on wholesale. And so Jen does do wholesale as well. So if you have any, tea rooms that you would like to recommend check in to tea for all reasons um, please do that um, she has a number of customers in our local area uh, over the years we've had other customers all over the country uh, but um, she's happy to talk with anybody who's a wholesaler and also one of the things that is unique about this business is that um, Jen would be willing to talk with an owner about a custom blend yeah. for that business. And, and that is something that was uh, a signature of Tea for All Reasons. When a, a tea room would contact me, we would 
offer to do a custom blend for them that nobody else had. So uh, there are a number of tea rooms in our area that have some uh, custom blends that were done specifically, specifically for, them. for them. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I, I'm definitely open to um, branching out to other tea rooms, boutique hotels, yes. bed and breakfast, whoever is looking for tea. And that includes bulk tea that they would serve and also packaged tea that they would sell if, if that's what they're interested in. Yeah. Um, okay. So this is after dark brewed and I dumped the pot. I was going to show that one, oh, but okay. I dumped it without thinking. Anyway, you can see it's a really light pink color. It's so good. It smells really good. I may drink that. One. Yeah, go ahead. Drink that. I might <laughs> drink the persimmon one on the way home. Yeah. Um, but it's a lovely pink color and the orange grow vanilla would be a little bit darker. And, and so, mm -hmm. yeah, is that good? Oh, it's good, right? It's my friend. <laughs> It's my old friend. Um, okay, so let's see if there are any questions. Mm. Let's talk about pinkies. Oh, the pinkies. You, you bring it. Don't put the pinky out. <laughs> that is, that started with, uh, again, the very delicate uh, teacups and it was to balance, was it the delicate ones or was it the heavy ones? It was to balance drinking the tea out of the cup. I think it was, well, I, I forget, it's been so long. But anyway, so no, don't, tea, don't pinkies pinky up. up, no. Pinky down. Pinky down. Pinky down. Um, okay, so for uh, some of that, yes, I sell the cookbook. If you go to the website, the cookbook is there. Uh, and I do have the beaded tea infusers um, for the folks who came in late and missed the shop demo. <laughs> the, you want to tell them about your other place that has a whole bunch of I, beaded yes, infusers? Yes, I can do that. Um, but yeah, cookbook and beaded tea infusers. I uh, There are five beaded tea infusers on the website right now. I have a bunch of them on my craft table that I plan on making in the next week or so that will get added to the shop probably next weekend maybe um and then uh but if you are looking for beaded tea infusers my other side gig um because i i don't have enough time <laughs> already um i do the i make jewelry and i do beaded tea infusers and um that is a uh, bead on a wire at etsy and it the, it's actually bead wire is the name of my shop on etsy um and so if you, uh, if you want to find that, I, I have a bunch of beaded tea infusers over there. Um, I make them with all different kinds of materials. I have a fandom collection of um, tea infusers for Doctor Who and uh, Outlander. I did some for Game of Thrones. I think I have a couple of those still in the shop. I've done some using chandelier crystals, yeah. which are really beautiful. And um, and we have a particular customer who we've mentioned her name earlier, who has, she has commissioned a number a of number, infusers yeah. because she has different little special vignettes, vignettes that she with, does with yeah. her pots. So, so themed, um, themed. So if you have infusers. a special something you need, you know, don't hesitate yeah. to ask. Yeah, for sure. But I do cup size. Most of the time I do cup size because that seems to be the most popular, but I, I can do pot size. I have right. pot size infusers. Yeah. And um, so yeah. another so. Um, uh, tool that's great for infusing the tea or straining the tea are these silver ones that I have here. Now, I'm not sure, I don't think I have them in my vintage for all reason or vintage um, .etsy .com shop, but um, you can message me if you're interested in any of these, but this one's really cool. I like this one because you would pour your tea on this side and then Strain oh, it that's cool. when, you, when you're done. When you're done, you know, it's got the little. It's got the little thing attached, so that one's cool. And then this one's really different. This one goes over the tea cup like that. It's a tipping one. Oh, that is so cool! Isn't that neat? And then your classic, classic. tea strainer, nice silver, heavy duty. 
And then this one I love. I just think it's so beautiful. And it's got a nice fine yeah, strainer is, on it. That's pretty so we have those four. So if you uh, are interested, message me on these because these are vintage items. Okay. Yeah, and that's vintage for all reasons on Etsy. On Etsy. Yeah. Or you can, um, but you can message me on T for All Reasons Facebook page yeah. if you want to, yep. or the vintage for all reasons Facebook page. Yep. Either one. Yep. And then another neat tool. If you have ever had dripping teapots, uh, these are great. These are this is a, a bag of uh, 20 um, drip catchers, and they're little papers that you put on the end of the spout of your teapot, and it'll catch the drips. So if anybody's interested in those, let me know on those too. I only have one left. So, okay, okay. Um, let's see. Someone, uh, pumpkin spice cheesecake is rooibos. Yes. Yes. Pumpkin spice cheesecake is rooibos. And it is delicious. Yeah. It is it's so, so good. good. Yeah. And caffeine free. And caffeine free. Drink it up. Yep. Drink it up. Uh, let's see. Any other questions? Okay. If you think of other questions, feel yeah. free to ask them. Um, if you're watching this from the Facebook page and you were not aware that there was a T for All Reasons group, come join us on the group. Mm -hmm. uh, in the Facebook search, just search for T for All Reasons group and um, how to, it, it has, so the Facebook page has the logo as the icon. The group has, it's a picture of T is the cover and that shows as the icon for the group. And so uh, come join us. It is a private group. You have to answer a couple questions to join the group and I'll accept your membership. I haven't rejected anybody yet. And so um, it's just to keep it's just to keep bots and spammers yeah. out. I might make it public at some point, but um, for now it's private. But any, you're all welcome. Anybody's yeah. welcome. And then also I do have a newsletter and um, I'm going to send one out an update probably in the next couple weeks to remind about our next live, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, oh, and for those who came late, I'm giving away tea. I'm giving away a sampler set of the fall favorites, and I'll explain. It's uh, Autumn Harvest, Falling Leaves, Pecan Pumpkin Tart, Jen's Apple Cobbler, maple. Pumpkin Spice Cheesecake, maple and leaf. Maple Leaf. Half ounce bags, six of them for free, giving it away. In the comments, fall favorites. That's all you have to type, fall favorites. I'm going to gather all of those um, probably tomorrow. I'm going to go between the page and the group to find everybody who put your name in. Put your name in the hat. My daughter's going to draw it, and whoever's name is pulled out is getting a free sampler. Yeah. Um, but I am going to, going back to the newsletter, squirrel. <laughs> going back to the newsletter, it, on the Facebook page, if you scroll down at the bottom, the left menu, and I'm, I'm scrolling on my left, left, the left menu down at the bottom, there's a link to the newsletter. Click on that link, a little pop-up comes up, and you should be able to put your information in there. Uh, I think it asks for your name and your email. I think that's it. Maybe your birthday? I can't remember. Um, sign up for the newsletter. If it's not working on the Facebook page, if you go to tforallreasons.com, it might pop up automatically the first time you go to the page, the pop up to sign up for the newsletter, or you can click on in the top right corner of that page, it says newsletter, click on that and you can sign up for the newsletter and then you'll get my emails. And I don't send a lot of emails. No. I, I think the last email I sent was... Uh, at least a month ago. Yeah, August. Yeah. About the that lives, was, about mm -hmm. the fact that we were going to do live events. And, so, and I didn't even send a reminder for this, and I meant to, and it just didn't happen. But um, but maybe once a month I'm going to send newsletters out. Especially in as this we, season, because yeah. we've got a lot going on this season. Yeah, but, um, but after that, I, it will yeah. be – I don't like spam, and so I don't want to spam you. Yeah. Um, but I do want to keep you up to date on what's going on, and so that's a way – for you to get uh, some information. So, so what have we got going on? What have we got coming up, Jen? Uh, we have coming up, first, I forgot to mention this at the okay. beginning too, coupon code mm -hmm. as well. So mm -hmm. I'm not only giving away tea, but I got a coupon code that's gonna be good through the 24th, I think. 
uh, of this coming week, whatever Thursday is, Thursday. Uh, so from tonight until Thursday, midnight Eastern time or 1159, uh, coupon code FB15, FB for Facebook, 15 is going to get you 15% off your total order. And I apologize to those of you who've already placed orders. I've gotten the <laughs> notifications on my phone. Thank I will I will refund you the discount because I forgot to mention the discount at the beginning. So you are going to get your discount. I will refund that back to you if you placed an order while we were live. <laughs> and I know a couple people did. Okay. And so I apologize that I didn't tell you that. Uh, beforehand. But FB15 in checkout coupon code and you'll get 15% off your total order between today and Thursday. Thursday. Thursday night. Yeah. All okay. Right. So um, we've got some ideas for some things coming up and uh, we're, we haven't set any definite dates except for an event in October. October. Uh, you want to tell them about that? So I'm getting, okay. <laughs> <laughs> my phone, my, my watch is going crazy. Okay. So October 17th, yeah. mark your calendar, mark your calendars. We're going to try to do a virtual open house. It's going to be crazy. Yeah. I don't know how we, we're going to do this. Yeah. We still haven't figured out how we're going to do this. But for those of you who are local, you know, my mom would do these fabulous open houses where she opened her home and her entire house was covered with amazing displays of vintage china beautiful things silver and she had tea for tasting she was gracious and allowed me to display my jewelry mm -hmm. um and we would have a great time um but in the era of covid well and the fact that i retired so and i've scaled down my business a lot i mean yeah. it's not a business anymore really i've just scaled everything down yeah. but um we're gonna we're gonna give it a go we're gonna try to do a virtual open house so uh and it will feature the teas of yes. course yes uh, beaded tea infusers um everything that i sell through tea for all reasons.com will be available and we're going to show it off uh, holiday teas, the fall teas, you yeah. know, all, all the normal teas and, um, and, the, and then she'll show off vintage. Yeah. As much as I can. I, I, I think this is the part where I'm, we're just trying not, to, we're trying to figure out trying how to, figure to do out it. How to make it work. Cause we're not the home shopping network, no. by the way. No. So <laughs> we have to figure out how we're going to make this work. Yeah. It, we'll, we'll come up with it. But, yeah. um, but also the other thing is, um, you know, on the negative side, COVID has really, um, cause a lot of people, given a lot of people pause about coming into our home or Jen's home for an event like that. So we thought, you know, this is, this is what we need to do. But, um, but, but the also, good side of that is that it opens it up to folks who are not yes, local. Yes. Um, it's not quite the same. You don't get to hug necks. You don't get to have good yeah. conversation with other friends who love tea and, and you, you don't, don't get, get to, to taste, taste the tea. <laughs> and we always had great food. Oh, yeah. Um, so the whole, not, counter. the whole counter was full of food. It was amazing. Two days every year. And I'm sad that we can't do it. Yeah. But we do want to try to bring something of that to you. Yeah. And um, and so mark your calendar. Same time. October, October 17th, 17th, 7 p.m. That one might run a little bit longer. It might. Yeah, we're, we're still going to do some um, some planning on that yeah. one. But the other things that we have in mind, and we don't have any dates set yet, but a lot of you, I know in years past, have asked about scone making. And this is one of the things I used to do in the workshops was demonstrate scone making. So we're going to have a little scone making session, mm -hmm. a sweet and a savory scone. We're going to do... I'm going to do a demonstration on chai. On chai. Yes. I think. Yeah, that would be a short one. <laughs> That'll be short, maybe yeah. a half an hour. Yeah. Um, and then, it doesn't take long to brew chai. Right. And then if if you're interested, um, maybe a pastry making um, demonstration, how to make a good pie crust, how to, how to make a good crust for tarts and things like that. And that would, you know, the scone one and the tart one probably be about an hour each. Mm -hmm. And then the the really one, the one I'm really excited about is demonstrating how to have an afternoon tea, how to serve an afternoon tea. And we would actually do the triple server and actually show you, you know, 
give you all the information about what is an afternoon tea, what's a cream tea, and then actually serve it in the sitting room. So yeah. that's something down the that's road. That's way too. down the road. That's way down the road. Because we got to figure out the logistics of that. Yeah. But yeah, we're excited. Uh, if you have something on your mind that you would like to see demonstrated or uh, I, I don't know, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, let us know yeah. and we will see if it's something that we can do. Yeah. And, um, and I know somebody asked if the video for this was going to be available. Yes. Um, uh, permanently. Yeah. The plan is it is going to be available permanently. I do have a way to download the video. And like I had mentioned earlier, I'm planning a YouTube channel. So all of these videos are going to go onto the YouTube channel and tell your friends about it. Tell yeah. them to come to tea for all reasons or the group because they can view it there. Yeah. And I think that's it. I think. <gasps> Yay. Oh, good job. <laughs> okay. Well, we are so glad that you joined yes. us tonight. I Thank hope you. that you've had a good time. I hope that you learned something. I hope that you're going to take away um, a new appreciation for tea um, that you can enjoy. I hope that you're, uh, feeling like you can branch out and try different types yeah. of teas that you haven't before. Like if you didn't think you liked green tea, you try it, try, try it again. Yeah. Um, knowing now that the brewing time and the water temperature critical. is the critical thing. Yeah. I didn't like green tea until I realized I wasn't doing it right. Yeah. And now I absolutely love, love green tea. So but we um, appreciate y'all so much. We really do. And just um, uh, hope that you're, going to have a blessed night, uh, especially those of you who are, you know, maybe on the, in the central or Western time zones, you've got the evening ahead of you. Hope you have a wonderful evening. And um, we hope to hear from you more and we will answer your questions. The ones that we didn't get to tonight, we'll go through and answer your questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. And good night. Good night.